Hey guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. So the Consumer Price Index, which is a key measurement of inflation, rose 9.1% in June of this year, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. So this is the fastest pace of inflation since December of 1981. And we keep hearing inflation, 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 okay. Why it's important to know is because it does directly affect us, the consumer, which I know you feel day in and day out when it comes to your money. But here's what's fascinating. According to researchers at the Heritage Foundation, it amounts to $3,400 yearly of an income decrease for the average worker. So when you look at everything together, the average person in America makes $44,000. So if you subtract $3,400 from that, then you get $40,600. So, I mean, it's a pretty big decrease, you guys. You feel that in your paychecks when you go and you actually actually have the money and see, okay, what is my money actually worth now? And so it can be scary because there are things in life that you just can't control and we cannot control inflation. We can control what we do with the money we, we do have and be smart about it, but it can be really, really difficult. So I wanted to give you guys some tips and some things to think about when it comes to staying in control of your money in what feels like an out of control situation, like a down market. So here are some best practices for you to take in, especially if you've lost $3,400 annually due to inflation. Number one, budgets. You knew I was gonna say it, but I'm gonna keep beating this drum. It's gonna be easy to just float through the month, spend money where you feel like you need to spend, and you are not the one that is really controlling every single dollar. So every single dollar needs to be stretched as far as it possibly can these days. And a budget is going to be the thing that's gonna help you. It is your roadmap. Now, check out Every Dollar. It's our budgeting app. We have lots of tutorial videos in there to really explain how to do a zero-based budget but this is one of the best habits you can get in. Number two, cut back on expenses. So when you're doing this, remember, this is not forever. This may be just for a period of time until prices maybe go back down or your income goes back up, something changes in your life. But when you cut expenses, look at the things that you really just don't need. And those needs versus wants is really important these days. So there are just wants that we have that we think are needs but aren't. So go through your budget and see, okay, where can we cut? Even if it's gonna be for three or four months, maybe in, just think in January, maybe we can pick it back up. But for a few months, just to get in control, cutting some of those expenses. Number three, do your research on insurance. This is an area that you can save so much money. We find this here at Ramsey Solutions all the time that make a really big splash because things like your insurance policies, there are things that you just pay for, whether it's quarterly or annually, and you just stay in the same rhythm and you never check and look at rates. So look at all of your insurance rates because you can actually save thousands of dollars by maybe even switching your coverage if you can, or even companies because you'll have a better rate somewhere else. Hey guys, do you wanna know how to make your money go further when you're on the hunt for new styles? Then you've gotta check out jane.com. So jane.com slash Rachel, you can save 65% on clothes, accessories, home decor, and other fun finds. They bring you new deals from over 2,000 boutiques and designer brands every single day. So head over to jane.com slash Rachel if you're ready to refresh your style and to check out their latest deals while they last. Number four, take a serious look at lifestyle inflation. So we talked about cutting expenses, but it is just funny to me when things come into our lives that you just feel like, oh yeah, it's just part of the rhythms, so whether it's like Amazon Prime or you know Disney Plus or these things that we didn't have even five, six, seven years ago, but now they're just a part of our budget and our lives that we really still don't need. So look at it because also if you get a raise, and maybe you're making more money. Maybe you switched in industries from 2020 and you're working somewhere else and you're making more money. Naturally, when you have more money, you're gonna wanna spend more money. So making sure that you are in a good financial position before you increase your lifestyle. Number five, stop impulse buying. So we always joke about it and I'm guilty of this, of like, oh, I go into Target for toothpaste and I walk out spending $258, you know, and all this stuff or whatever it is. Like there's jokes about it, you know, on Instagram I see or people, you know, friends talk about it. And it's become a joke, 
But for real, you guys, for real, if you are looking at every single dollar, you have to be diligent. So the impulse buying, it has to stop. You have to really be able to say, why am I buying this? Was it planned? Is it in the budget? Number six, don't shop at certain stores out of habit. So ask yourself, if I shopped somewhere else, could it be cheaper? Grocery stores are a great example of this. Depending on the store, the prices can vary greatly. So look to see, is there a store that I can shop at that I can get a better deal? And even if you don't know your way around it, I know there's some things out of convenience, but, but if you really are looking to save money, this is a great option. Speaking of grocery stores, number seven, meal prep and find ways to stretch your meals. So food will always be a budget buster for majority of people. So if you can figure out, hey, what food do we actually need? What's in our freezer and our pantry this week that we can use as part of a meal? Anywhere you can save money, that is key. Number eight, don't view financial sacrifice as being beneath you. So it's really hard when you're living at a certain expectation, right? A certain lifestyle and an expectation that I think culture is set for us. You're here and you're realizing, gosh, it's so tight. I feel like we're just living paycheck to paycheck. Nothing's budging, nothing's moving. Something has to change. So whether that's picking up an extra job or a side hustle or it's cutting expenses, like any of those things that take you out of your regular rhythm with your money is going to be so important. And again, it feels like, oh, I shouldn't have to do this because because I work hard and you know I've, I've been doing great at work and I'm making great money or whatever the case may be. But for that moment for you to get in control, there's probably gonna be sacrifices involved and it's not gonna be forever. And, I, and there's so much that goes into this, you guys. Again, it can feel like, oh, I'm not gonna take that on over there because you know, whatever, how it looks or how it feels, I don't wanna do that. But in order to make progress with your money, if you're not happy with the current situation you're in or you're feeling the pinch of inflation, there may be things that you have to do in the short term to really get that long-term peace. So it is worth it. I'm telling you, it's not gonna be forever, not gonna be forever, but maybe needed in this moment. So I know it's hard. And again, some people are struggling more than others. Some people, it's this is their wake-up call to realize, oh, wow, $3,400, that swing feels like it's taking me out and I'm feeling it. So whatever it is, just know that you can get in control of your money. Just know you can get yourself out of debt and have margin back in your life. You can start to build wealth. You can change your legacy when it comes to money. These things are possible, but it is up to you to say, what can I control and focus on those things? Because that's what this is all about, you guys, taking control of your money and creating a life you love. 